Oh yeah, we got 10 minutes. We can probably get through the Rococo period, no problem. <laughs> now here's the thing about the Rococo period. Even the French today are a little embarrassed about it. It's not fair me, for me to say that, but this is the kind of thing that, you know, certain tastes run certain ways. If you're one of those people who don't mind, I mean, it's, it's like the anti-classical style. It couldn't be less classical, but that's what it was always meant to be. It was supposed to be fun, joyous, sexually titillating, kind of, you know, playful. Never meant to be something of high seriousness. The Rococo style's context for me is the most interesting thing about it. So you're seeing pictures like this. This is a work by Antoine Watteau called Pilgrimage II, or On the Island of Scythera. Um, this is a style that comes about with the fall of Louis XIV, and the French Royal Academy takes this kind of U-turn at the time and adopts a style or allows into the French Royal Academy. Remember, they have these giant exhibitions every year, uh, a subgenre known as the Fête Galant. And the Fête Galant is basically a gallant festival or a gallant party. And it's all about kind of sexual titillation and so forth, playfulness. The reason it comes about is that Louis the Fifteenth, when he takes over from his brother, um, uh, from his father, uh, decides that he doesn't want that high serious style like Et and Arcadia Ego. In fact, he doesn't even want to control the aristocracy anymore, which is what Louis the Fourteenth did. So he lets them all move out of Versailles and go back into Paris. And when they go back into Paris, they're like, you who, yay, finally, right? We want our own money spent on our own things. And they built these luxurious, what are called hotels. They're just giant townhouses full of chandeliers and mirrors and beautiful furniture. And it's all glitz and glam and fun and party, party, party all the time. If you've ever seen the movie, and if you haven't, please do. It's fantastic. The movie that's Dangerous Liaisons, the first one, with Glenn Close and John Malkovich, and if those two old great actors don't do it for you, there's a really young Keanu Reeves in it. And for the other side, there is a very young Uma Thurman in it, too. There's lots of intrigue and sex and titillation and so forth. It's great. That movie is about the Rococo period. It's based upon a book that was written at the end of the Rococo period, Les Liaisons Dangereuses. So it's all about that kind of glam and glitz and fun and so forth. Now, if you're decorating your beautiful Paris apartment, right, and there's mirrors everywhere and there's chandeliers and you got, you know, velvet and leather and so forth, who wants Et and Arcadia Ego sitting behind your couch? It's just a bummer. What you want is something like this. These are fashionable couples getting together, hooking up at some party on the mythical island where Venus landed. That's Scythera, right? So it's all about love. It's all about these, it's based upon these lavish garden parties that they would have where everyone would get together in their fanciest clothing and basically drink tons of champagne, eat good food, have affairs with each other. Right? And let's have a style that kind of goes along with that. It's literalized in this work by Vato called the Signboard of Garçon, which was literally a, a, a signboard for a gallery. The galleries start at this time, or at least the galleries as we know them really get going at this time period, in which what you see are fashionable couples coming to buy paintings that they can see on the walls or look for in a catalog of all the subjects you'll become familiar with, you know, sprites and uh, nymphs and, you know, Venus figures frolicking in the woods. Over here you see literally a portrait of Louis XIV being crated away. It's like classical style associated with this dude, don't want it anymore. What we want are these types of scenes. See ya, Louis. We want this or this. This is Boucher, Boucher's work. You don't need to remember any of these, please. <laughs> Let's just go through them quick, right? Diana at her bath. Who's Diana? Well, she's a huntress of Greek mythology. She's a virginal figure. But here, what is this really all about? Someone tell me. If no one gave you a title of this, what do you think this is all about? 
It's about these two, right? It's just about beautiful bodies, an excuse to put them in there. I'm presuming that Diana didn't run around hunting in the woods all the time without any clothes on. Or Venus at her bath. What's this? That's what they all do on Mount Olympus. They all just hang out, right? Another Boucher work. It's a Vanitas picture on the one hand, but lots of Venus figures. Oh, more Venus figures, nude bodies. Hey, implied line, let's all look at her. Shh, don't tell anyone what's going on. Give me those arrows, Cupid. We can't have this go too far. But, of course, it's all about going too far, isn't it? Pan and syrinx. I told you about this when we were talking about why blown instruments symbolize vulgar sexuality in Western art. Here's the story that gave that, that metaphor to us. This is Pan and Syrinx, where Pan, who is half man, half goat, one of those satyr figures, is chasing after Syrinx, who is a lesser goddess of the woods, who at this point has been saved by her father last moment by being turned into reeds, which he then fashions into his pan flute and blows rather than having sex with her. But really, it's just about these two figures in this tushy, Right? You have a whole other side. <laughs> you have a whole other side to this too that's very, very moralizing, like this one by Chardin, uh, called the governess, where the governess is saying, Hey young man, you need to grow up, stop playing your games, take care of business. The most famous image from this entire period, perhaps, is this one. How many people have seen this before, right? And this is exactly what you get in the Rococo period. Sexual titillation, a little bit of intrigue. We've got an affair. The man who was having the affair with this woman actually asked Fragonard to paint this picture for him showing his affair. So he could show off to all of his buddies, I guess. And what we have here is, you know, very, not so clandestinely, but very strategically placed. He is lying on the ground while she is swung up in the air so he can look up her dress. And remember, at this time, bosoms, breasts, cleavage, Nothing provocative about that. They're heaving everywhere in every picture. No one cares at all. They're like, yeah, whatever. But ankles, ho, ho, watch out for that. That's pushing the line, and that's what you're getting to see here. Again, Cupid's in on the whole thing. He's like, shh, let's keep it all on the DL. This guy is actually supposed to be some kind of pastor who's in on it too, like covering up for everyone, Right? Lots of scene of young love and titillation. This is the love letter. This is one of uh, Fragonard's work that has 18 different scenes to it of the progress of young love. And what we're witnessing here is a young man jumping over the proverbial trysting wall, all those barriers that you place between young lovers that just inflames their desire in order to meet with his young, interesting companion. Very, very erotic scenes. This is the sleeping... Bacchon, which is a follower of Dionysus or um, Bacchus, god of wine and revelry. Get a look up her dress. Or I leave you with this one because it is, without question, the weirdest picture that I'll show you all quarter. I have specifically um, not done any research on this just to keep it mysterious for myself. It's in London. The first time I saw it, I remember being like, wow, the Rococo period. Very, very strange. I mean, let's just look at this for a minute. Let me just leave you with this so it's with you all day. <laughs> you got what I presume to be like the hot teacher. And this is a young man who's being chastised or taught something by her, although goodness knows what happened to his pants. <laughs> he looks like, what? Notice, though, that not just being a hot teacher up here, we see, in a weird Freudian way, mm, red knife down here. What's that all about going on here? And look at his eye, like, oh, 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 what's going on there? Don't tell me what this is really all about. I'd rather it just be that weird. <laughs>